You can get a copy of my free ebook Technical Analysis Basics with one click. There is a link in the description box down below. So maybe you're new to technical analysis or you've been using it a while. There's a series of articles in this book that'll get you using some more technical analysis tools pretty much right away. It's written for beginners to intermediate, super easy to use. Hi everybody, this is Lara from Pure Elliott Wave. I am working through my list of markets that you voted for me to give you free analysis of. This is last on my list, this is Bpro Network. Next few days I'll be doing Filecoin and then we'll have another vote. So if you want me to analyze a market for you for free on this YouTube channel, keep an eye out on the channel for the next update and I'll have a link to a vote in the description box in the next update, not today, probably next week. And so you can vote for your favorites. And then I'll do the most voted for so that my time is spent efficiently. I like that. I'm going to update my wave count for Bpro Network with you. It looks like it might have formed a low. Let's just have a quick calculation. How deep would primary do to be here? 99% correction. My goodness, that is so deep. Absolutely normal for a cryptocurrency to have a correction that is this deep. Uh, if it's not over here, it's going to be over really soon. If it's going to make new highs, it is. If it made a new low below this point here, 0 0.000337, then I would consider that it's probably, it may not have a next, another bull run. So this price point has to remain intact. A new low by any amount at any time frame below this price point would see this wave count absolutely invalid and I wouldn't consider this a good opportunity if that happened. For now, it remains intact. For now, from this low to this high, there is a five wave impulse. From this high to this low, there is a three wave zigzag. So this looks about right. It looks this wave count fits, meets all Elliott wave rules. Let's have a look at how the last wave could possibly have been over here. Is this slow? Yes, it is. Could have one, two, one, two. I'm just going to check that the second wave is not a running flat. I want to make sure C moves beyond the end of A. Yes, it does. So that's an expanded flat. That's a common structure. I think we might have a relatively brief couple of brief shallow fourth waves down in here. This third, well, that looks like a good third wave, doesn't it? Strongest momentum according to MACD. Here's the middle part of the third wave. Let's just see if it does subdivide nicely as an impulse. I'd have to check lower time frames to see if this, the high of this candlestick came before or after the low. If at lower time frames this high came first, then that would be part of sub annuit 3 and the wave count would be valid. But if the high of this candlestick comes after the low of this candlestick, then it has to be sub annuit 4 and then it would be an invalid part of that wave count. But I'm working with Yahoo Finance data here. Unfortunately, I don't have a lower time frame. I could switch it over to Crypto Compare and I would have a, another time frame, but I just don't have the time to do that today. I think we might have a triangle here. No, that looks terrible. Might be a combination. No, that doesn't make sense either. Oh goodness. I don't know. Some kind of B wave in there. I don't really want to spend too much time on that. I want to see if I can see an impulse complete over down here. Is this an overlap here? Yes it is. So yeah, it has to be over there. I don't like that at all. That doesn't look like a very good impulse. Um, I think maybe I'd have to put this here. I don't like that proportion, but it's less than ideal, but it's not unheard of. Oh, this is this is hard. Is this going to work? Nope, I'd want to put this down here. And then that looks okay. Now the middle of the third wave, I can see an impulse in here. Yeah, that wick, the end of the first wave. The second wave up here, a little fourth wave. Okay, that's mm, not ideal. I'm going to quickly work on an alternate. Because I think I need a bearish alternate for this. Okay, and the bonus, or the uh, uh, bonus, I don't know, 
the advantage, that's the word I'm looking for, sorry people, the advantage of doing this alternate is we can figure out at what price point we can have confidence in the main wave count if this upward movement is just another little fourth wave correction then it may not move into first wave price territory above 0 0.001046 let's port a Elliott channel around this I'm going to grab an extended channel I'm going to use Elliott's first technique draw a channel from 1 to 3 place a parallel copy on 2 nice overshoot here that's okay I always like to make my trend channels the same color as the wave degree that I'm attaching it to middle of the third wave overshoots the channel in the direction of the trend beautiful that looks like a really good looking Elliott channel cryptocurrencies have really deep second waves so these second waves can breach channels on the opposite side of the trend as well so this looks okay too so if this is a fourth wave correction then it can't move into first wave price territory so that means we can have confidence in this wave count if we see a new high above 0 0.001046 and outside of the channel so that would be my bottom line the definition of a bear market or a bearish trend is a series of lower lows and lower highs while price remains with a series of lower lows and lower highs the bear market should be assumed to remain intact lower lows lower highs here's the last major swing high within the bear market a new high above 0 0.001212 would add substantial confidence that the bear market should be over and the next bull run would be in the very early stages 0 0.001212 is way down here it's a long way down so even if you wait for that final confidence that would give you a lot of confidence that the bear market is over and the next bull run is underway not certainty we're dealing with a balance of probabilities not certainties here but if you get a new swing high above here you could have some reasonable confidence the bear market is quite likely to be over and the next bull run is underway and this wave count is very bullish the next wave up for BPRO is expected to be a third wave at primary degree so it should be was very likely to be a long strong extension many multiples the length of the first wave how long was this third wave in relation to the first within primary wave one within primary wave one its third wave intermediate wave three was 12.28 times the length of intermediate wave one if primary three exhibits that same relationship to primary one as intermediate three did to intermediate one back here then a reasonable expectation or a possible target could be 0.5626 that would be where primary three reaches 12.28 times the length of primary wave one so it looks like BPRO network may have a low in place it's possible this is what I would need to see for confidence a breach of this channel in the first instance and then a new high above 0.001046 if that happens then this would be my expectation BPRO network may be in the early stages of the next huge bull run up to a possible target up here now we can use Elliott wave rules to inform our decision making and this is one of the best this is one of the best ways I like to do that this is a simple Elliott wave impulse one of the simplest structures it's labeled one two three four five some of the rules regarding the structure is wave three must move beyond the end of one and when it's complete wave four has to then unfold and may not move into wave one price territory so what that means is if you correctly identify the end of a first wave and then you know when the second wave is ended and you know that while price remains within wave one price territory you can enter a position within wave one price territory hold it throughout the entirety of the third wave hold on throughout the fourth wave to capture the gains of a fifth wave now the reason why that is so important is look at the length of this fifth wave compared to the third wave and the first wave this is very typical for cryptocurrencies this fifth wave 
Look at the second number in brackets. That's the length from the low to the high is 0 0.040693, whereas the third wave was just 0 0.008950. This fifth wave is just over four and a half times the length of the third wave. So the greatest profit is in the fifth wave and it moves much more quickly. So you can get the greatest profit in the shortest amount of time if you can hang on throughout the fifth wave. It doesn't look like it's four and a half times longer than the third wave because of the scale. This is a semi-log scale which squishes up movement at the top of the scale and expands movement down at the bottom of the scale. You have to view cryptocurrency charts pretty much on all time frames except below daily on a semi-log scale because otherwise they just you can't read the chart. It just makes no sense because of the extreme volatility. And so that's why I want to use that rule for my own investing. For most of these markets, price is still within the first wave price territory and it's at a relatively low level. And so I'm going to buy some more cryptocurrency while price remains in first wave price territory so that I can hold throughout the third wave, hang on throughout the correction of the fourth wave, to capture the gains of the fifth wave which should move most likely many multiples the length of the third wave in a very brief amount of time. That's the explosive end. Have a real quick look at some technicals. This is so far a sustained low back here in December 2020. This is a bullish engulfing candlestick pattern off this low. At this high there wasn't a bearish candlestick reversal pattern. This is a huge bear market no, though. Over 90% of market value has been lost. Absolutely a devastating bear market lasting over a year, quite a long time. This is on a weekly chart. This current weekly candlestick is incomplete. We're just in Thursday afternoon. I'd have to look at this on Monday, but if it remains a strong green candlestick, then it would form a strong bullish engulfing candlestick pattern. And we have seen it back here, but it wasn't at the low. We didn't see it down here. This is not a bullish reversal pattern. Again, we saw it here after the low. This is a bullish piercing pattern. Didn't lead to much though, but this is a much stronger bullish pattern. Does it have push from volume so far? So far no, but the week is incomplete, so I'd be looking at how volume ends for this week. If it shows an increase beyond the previous week, then I would read that as quite bullish. The previous week was green, 1.4 million was the volume. Previous week below, uh, prior to that also 1.4, so even volume no increase in the previous green week. But it's just a tiny little doji. So not really particularly significant that there wasn't an increase in volume. So on balance volume remains within a range. If we see a break above this resistance line, that would be a bullish signal. There's no bullish divergence at this last low between price and on balance volume. ADX is at a very low level coming up from below both DX lines. If this rises up to 15, it will tell us there's a new trend. And at that point in time, whichever DX line is, is above the other will tell us what direction the trend is. But for now, too low to indicate a trend. The previous upward trend reached very extreme. The downward trend wasn't actually indicated by ADX. Too many corrections within it. RSI didn't reach oversold, money flow index did and has exhibited single bullish divergence at this low back down here a couple of weeks ago. So that would, after reaching fairly deeply oversold for the first time, how has RSI behaved previously? This is the lowest point RSI has gotten on the weekly chart, but it didn't reach oversold. AD, uh, ATR continuing to decline normal behaviour for crypto in a bear market, and stochastics oversold, and has been for a while. So I would be expecting at least an upward swing to resistance. Price is bouncing up off support about 0.00000593. Let's look for resistance at 0.000919. On the daily chart at this slow down here, this is uh, this is a bullish engulfing candlestick pattern, but it lacks support from volume. So there is no bullish candlestick pattern off the low. But we are starting to see some strength in upward movement, an increase in range with push from volume. 
We have seen it before though in this bear market for this bounce here, an increase in range with push from volume and that didn't mean the bear market was over, that was just a bounce within an ongoing uh, bear market. So this could also be another bounce within an ongoing bear market. We really need to see a new swing high for that pattern of lower lows and lower highs to be broken. Now you could, I would take that possibly as this swing high back here, 0.000844. Or maybe this one here, but I think this one back here would give more confidence. That's more conservative. On balance volume did not exhibit bullish divergence. This line drawn more conservatively has multiple tests, is long held, but has quite a strong slope. So this is a bullish signal, but not a very strong one. ADX is declining. There's no clear trend at either time frame. RSI is moving higher with price. Exhibits a longer term bullish divergence from this point to this point back here, but that happened back here too, and yet the bear market continued. Money flow index neutral, RSI neutral, stochastics entering overbought, and ATR low and very flat. That's my analysis for BPRO Network. I'll have a vote on my next video, which will be Filecoin, and I hope to get that done maybe over the weekend. If not, then probably on Monday. Thank you so much for watching. If you managed to make it to the end, I really appreciate your support. And I hope everyone is having an awesome week.